All right. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, another reminder that we have um, uh, subsidiary meetings after this for Atlantic NGHP at SESC, directly after this board. Uh, the last item on the DASNY board meeting agenda is executive session. So when that happens, uh, we can excuse staff. Sarah, do we have a quorum? We do. We have almost a full house today, Madam Chair. And just so the record reflects it, and for anyone uh, in the public who may be viewing in the New York City office, we have our Chair Lisa Gomez, uh, Robert Rodriguez, Jerry Romsky, and Beryl Snyder uh, from the Albany office, Joan Sullivan, Christina Coughlin, and Ken Evans here in the Buffalo office, Janice McKinney. Al Carney is joining us by telephone and is a participating member pursuant to the exception in section 3.7 of the bylaws. And the only member not present with us today is Adrian Swazorski from Budget. And Wellington is here Wellington. too. Thank you, Wellington. Wellington is here. I told you Wellington is gonna be here. <laughs> Good to see you, Wellington, it's Al. Al, hope all is well. Okay, we have an exciting agenda today of, of both financing and uh, as well as some administrative stuff, but the most exciting part is I am so pleased to be able to recommend to the members for their consideration a resolution appointing Robert J. Rodriguez, who is currently a DASI board member and is our esteemed Secretary of State, of the State of New York, uh, as uh, Interim Executive Director, effective May 8th. Uh, of DASNY. Uh, he will be, he, this, will, this is necessary because he has to sort of wrap up his business um, and uh, also go through a Senate confirmation process. But I have known Robert for a very long time in, in a number of capacities. I can't think of a finer person to be appointed uh, as our, our, our next executive director. He brings a unique combination of uh, public service and municipal finance, and I think will be just a really great next executive director for, for DASNY. Uh, Nadine has provided a memo, his bio, I'm not gonna read his bio, but his bio is in the materials that were sent around. We have uh, a memo regarding the process and the legal requirements for the appointment, uh, which are in your packages. Um, do you wanna say something? Oh. Um Thank you so much, Chair Gomez. It's an honor to have served as a member of the board with my, my fellow board members and to uh, move into this new role serving the board and, and continuing the great work that DASNY has done historically and, um, and, and what we have ahead of us. So I know that there are certainly challenges that we have all uh, dealt with and experienced um, in, in recent times, but I'm, I look forward to the, the challenge, the newfound uh, collaboration and partnership with, uh, with the board uh, as a result of our new leadership here um, and um, continuing on the, on the legacy of diversity and excellence that DASNY uh, represents to the state of New York. Uh, so I'm grateful to the governor for the opportunity and I look forward to the work ahead. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, could I get a motion on this, on this item? I'll move. Okay, Beryl, Jerry, Second. thank you so much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? That'd be me. Just for our <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, let the record. And I wanted to thank Charlie. Charlie did a nice job of doing the uh, transitioning to try to keep the ship uh, yes. thank you Charlie, yes. for all of your work thank you. absolutely yes. thank you so much jerry for bringing that up i mean the entire staff has been been right. great um just just really a testament to the quality of the team here that you know the wheel stayed on the bus um yeah. and and you know thanks largely to charlie's uh able able hand on the tiller so thank you so much charlie and we look forward to the next chapter lisa I, I have just one negative about this appointment, I'm going to be losing Robert as in my audit committee, and he's been terrific. Okay. So there is a loss to me, a small loss. <laughs> you've, been, you've been a great member. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, we'll, we'll, we'll get you another great member, Joan. Promise. I promise. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Uh, back to our reg regularly scheduled business. Uh, could we have a motion to approve the minutes in tab two? So moved. Second. And was that was that Joan? Joan. Joan. Yep. Thank you. That's small again, Joan. I couldn't couldn't see. You. Sorry. Great. Uh, all in Joan. favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? <laughs> Great. Motion carries. Mo moving on, Joan, to that vaunted audit committee report, please, behind tab yes. three. Yes. Um, the audit committee met at length yesterday into the evening. Um, and um, our new internal control officer was introduced, um, Greg Mass. Meisen Bakker, yes. um, and, and Greg did a report on internal controls. Jenna did her um, update on the, the committee, for the committee on the status of the 23-24 audit plan and also presented the internal audit plan for the upcoming year, which the committee unanimously approved. That, is, that concludes my report. Okay, uh, and there's no action. I see I inadvertently skipped over a housekeeping, I shouldn't say housekeeping item, item one, the election of officers as presented um, in the board book. This is a, a this is in tab one. Did I get a motion for that? Robert? Second. 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 Second, Al. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great, thank you, sorry, now. Ma Madam Chair, I, I often do this, it, it's uh, just my personal need, but I, I know a bunch of people on this list, but I've never met some of them. And as officers of DASNI, it would be great to ha have somebody bring them in just, just so the board members can say hello. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe we can schedule that for the next meeting if possible. Um, anyone else on this front? Great. Okay. Um, next we turn to, uh, Beryl, uh, tab four, the governance committee report. Thank you so much. Um, hold on. Let me get to this. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, the first matter before the board would be the approval of the minutes of the December 6, 2023 meeting. <clears throat> You've all had copies of the minutes and a chance to review them. Um, ha does anyone have any questions or comments on the minutes? And if not, I'd like a motion to have them approved. I think you mean the April 9th meeting, a right? Uh, no? December, the, oh, the, that's the true. approval of the minutes is from okay. December 6th, got it, got it, got it. Um, which is the first matter. And the uh, April 9th, yesterday, will be the next report. Um, do I have approval of a motion for approval of the minutes from December? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Second. Al. Thank you, Joan. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, the next is the annual review of the existing policies. I guess. Let me report on the April 9th committee meeting, which occurred yesterday evening after the audit committee. So it was also a the very- evening yesterday. Yes, yes, it was quite a full um, afternoon um, and um, all in preparation of this meeting. At the meeting yesterday, the Governance Committee conducted its annual review of the following documents as required by the Public Authorities Law and DASNI's governing principles. Uh, we reviewed the DASNI bylaws, the policy regarding payment of compensation and reimbursement to and time in attendance of senior management, the whistleblower protection policy and procedure, the code of ethical conduct for board members, um, with the exception, well, we did not have any changes or any recommendations to any of these documents. Um, the full board, however, is required to review the bylaws annually as well. 
So you should have a copy in your board packet of the uh, bylaws. So you've had a chance to review them. Um, I'd like to turn it back to the board chair, assuming there are no comments on the bylaws. Madam Chair. Does anybody have any questions for Beryl or the Governance Committee? Okay. Um, I'm, everyone has reviewed the bylaws. This satisfies the annual review requirements. No resolution is required. Uh, this is just review only. Okay. Uh, and the governance, the uh, corporate governance committee also met in executive session and reviewed the results of the confidential board self evaluation. Uh, we do this every year, um, and everyone on the board had copies of it the past several years. Um, the results. Uh, we had a lengthy discussion as to. The results of that self-analysis, as well as the usefulness of such a, an evaluation. Um, I am not sure we have a need to go over that now in executive committee, but I understand there's an executive committee. We're going to go into executive session at the end of the meeting, and if there are any need to do that, um, we can go over it at that time so we can make it just a more smoothly flowing session. So um, back to you, Ms. Chair. Thank you. Back to you. Over to you, Jerry Romsky for the Finance yes, Committee. Thank you, Board. Madam Chair. Thank you, Beryl. Um, we met a short time ago. Thanks to Porsche, we actually reviewed and approved the meeting minutes from the, uh, the, uh, the March meeting. We then advanced to uh, discuss three offerings that are on today's agenda. First up was Columbia University. Um, we recommend that that be approved. Next up was Pace University. Um, and we recommend that that also be approved. And last but not least was the Shelter Island Public Library. Um, and we also recommend that that be approved. And unless anyone has any questions or concerns for finance, um, that will conclude my report, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions for the Finance Committee? Okay, um, then I think we need some motions to adopt in this order, please. Uh, Orange County Bo Ulster BOCES, tab six. Uh, we're going to have uh, Steve Posier uh, present along with Chris, I'm not sure if it's Cagnata or Canada, uh, and Natalia Pearson Farrar, co bond councils to walk us through that transaction. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, all. The board is being asked to adopt documents for up to $15,140,216 on behalf of the Orange Ulster Bosies. The board adopted a resolution to proceed for the multi phase Orange Ulster Bosies capital improvement program in the aggregate amount not to exceed $158,825,054 at the January 10th, 2024 board meeting. The PACB approval and the seeker review have been completed for the capital improvement program. As described at the January meeting, the BOCES elected to split the capital improvement program into multiple financings. BOCES has received approval from the state education department for three of the seven phases of the capital improvement program and would like to finance these first three phases with the series 2024A bonds. The approvals for the first three phases make up the series 2024A bond project and total the $15,140,216 used in the documents the board is being asked to adopt today. Staff anticipates returning in late 2024 to request the adoption of documents for another series of bonds that will finance the remaining phases of the capital improvement program. I'll now turn it over to Natalia and Chris to provide an overview of the bond documents. Thank you, Steve, and good morning. Um, please excuse my ghostly appearance. It's really bright in my apartment today. Um, <laughs> good morning to DASME board members and staff. Today, the board members are being asked to consider and in the board's discretion adopt the series 2024A resolution, which is a series resolution for up to $15,140,216 
in the aggregate of Master Bosi's program lease revenue bonds, Orange Ulster issue series 2024A, which if adopted would be issued on behalf of the Board of Cooperative Educational Services of the Sole Supervisory District of Orange and Ulster Counties, New York, also known as OU BOCES, under DASNY's Master BOCES Program Lease Revenue Bond Resolution. The bonds to be issued pursu pursuant to the 2024A resolution called the Series 2024A Bonds are proposed to be sold to Roosevelt and Cross Incorporated pursuant to a standard bond purchase agreement. If approved, the Series 2024A resolution authorizes the Series 2024A bonds to one, finance or refinance as applicable, the cost to construct capital improvements consisting of additions to and reconstruction of the Regional Educational Center building on the Arden Hill campus of OU BOCES located at 4 Harriman Drive, Goshen, New York, 10924. Two, fund the debt service reserve fund and or pay the cost of acquiring a reserve fund facility with respect to the series 2024A bonds. Three, pay the cost of a policy of municipal bond insurance, if any, with respect to the series 2024A bonds. And four, pay all or a portion of the cost of issuance of the series 2024A bonds. With that, I will now turn it over to Chris to discuss to discuss certain documents that would be entered into in connection with the project. Thank you. Natalia, it's Al Carney. It's good to have you with us. Thank you. Good morning. Hope you're well. I am. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Natalia. Good morning, everyone. Pursuant to Section 1689 of the Dormitory Authority Act, DASNY is permitted to issue bonds to finance or refinance the cost of constructing BOCES school facilities. Under the act, DASNY is authorized to become lessee of such facilities under an agreement of lease and to lease back such facilities to the BOCES pursuant to a lease and agreement. The agreement of lease from OU BOCES to DASNY may be at a nominal fee. The lease and agreement from DASNY to the BOCES must set basic rent in an amount sufficient to pay debt service on any DASNY bonds. The agreement of lease and the lease and agreement related to this project as contemplated by the series 2024A resolution are wholly consistent with this section of the act. Under the act and under a memorandum of understanding to be entered into among DASNY, the New York State Education Department and the Office of the State Controller, DASNY shall file a certificate annually with the Commissioner of Education stating all amounts due from OU BOCES to DASNY under the lease and agreement previously described. Upon receipt of a certification from the Commissioner of Education, the State Controller is required to deduct the amount certified by the Commissioner as due to DASNY from the state aid otherwise payable to OU BOCES and pay that amount directly to DASNY. If the state aid is insufficient, OU BOCES will remain obligated under the lease and agreement to pay rent in an amount sufficient to meet debt service requirements of the Series 2024A bonds. In conclusion, the Series 2024A bonds will be special obligations of DASNY payable solely out of the revenues and the money and investments held in the funds and accounts established under the Series 2024A resolution, other than any money and investments held in the arbitrage rebate fund. Payment of the Series 2024A bonds is secured by the pledge and assignment made by the general resolution of the revenues, certain monies, and investments, including the debt service reserve fund established under the series 2024A resolution and held under the general resolution and DASNY's right there too. This concludes our presentation. Natalia and I are happy to answer any questions that the board members may have. Thank you. And thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone have any questions? May I have a motion, please? So moved. So, second. Thank you, Al. Okay. All in favor of Orange Ulster BOCES, which I just learned today, was Board of Cooperative Education Services. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Uh, any, uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. On to tab seven for Columbia University. Uh, Dave Ostrander will be presenting from Albany, I believe. Thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, the board is being asked to adopt a resolution to proceed for a bond issuance in an amount not to exceed 150 million on behalf of Columbia University. 
Bond proceeds are expected to be used to finance or reimburse the university for costs associated with various construction and renovation projects at its Morningside Heights Medical Center and Manhattanville campuses. This includes a new 34-story building housed graduate students and faculty members on the southwest corner of 125th Street and Broadway in Manhattan, as well as various renovation, deferred maintenance, and replacement projects that are located at other facilities across the Columbia system. The outstanding obligations of the university are currently rated AAA by Moody's and AAA by s &P. And it's anticipated that the loan agreement will be a general unsecured obligation of the university. And again, today we're asking for a resolution to proceed for a $150 million financing. And we expect to bring this back to the board uh, at the May meeting to adopt documents. And that concludes my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions? Maybe? None here, Madam Chair, none here. Great, thank you. Uh, may we have a motion to proceed? Uh, so moved. Al? Second. Robert, second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, moving on to tab eight with Alex Sardine, also from Albany, is uh, Pace University, tab eight. Good morning again, everyone. Uh, the board is being asked to authorize a resolution to proceed with the financing off one or more series of tax exempt and or taxable fixed and or variable rate bonds with a maturity not to exceed 35 years in an amount not to exceed 330 million on behalf of Pace University. Proceeds from the series 2024 bonds are expected to be used to finance costs associated with various construction and renovation projects at the university's one Pace Plaza building, the university's primary building on its New York City campus as well as to refund all or a portion of the university's Series 2013A bonds issued by DASNY and the Series 2014A and 2014B bonds, which were issued by the Westchester County Local Development Corporation. The proposed issuance will allow the university to continue its work on its New York City master plan, which will deliver upgraded facilities and improve program offering, as well as achieve NPV savings on its currently outstanding debt. The university's Currently outstanding obligations are rated triple B minus by SMP. The full details of this transaction was provided to members a few moments ago at the finance committee. Madam Chair. Okay. Any questions for Alex? Okay. Uh, may we have a motion, please? Sure. Jerry? Sarah, I'll second. second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of uh, the resolution? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you, Al. Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Great. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, tab nine, the Shelter Island Public Library Society. That sounds like a great place to be in the summer. The Shelter <laughs> Island <laughs> Public Library there. Society. I have to go for a visit to check on the uh, construction. suggestion. <laughs> On Excellent. a boat. <laughs> it's a great place to be on a boat. Excellent suggestion. Okay, tab nine is the transaction summary and resolution to proceed with the financing transaction for the aforementioned Shelter Island Public Library Society. Steve Cozier will present. Thank you. And yes, I agree. Maybe we can have our July board meeting there. <laughs> From um, your lips to God's ear. <laughs> Uh, the board is being asked to adopt a resolution to proceed for 31 year tax exempt and or taxable fixed and or variable rate bonds in an amount not to exceed $9.5 million for Shelter Island Public Library Society. The library is a new DASNY client and was added to the DASNY statute in 2023. Bond proceeds will be used to construct additions, alterations, and improvements to the library building. Voters approved the $9.5 million referendum on June 17th, 2023 which effectively increases the annual tax levy in an amount sufficient to fund debt service on the bonds. The debt service fund will be funded through a lockbox mechanism, withholding the debt service from tax receipts ahead of bondholder payments. The bonds are expected to be rated AA3 or better by Moody's. Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, any questions other than- library bonds. Other than- <laughs> No, the bonds are not being serviced by library <laughs> funds, Jerry. 
Um, any question, any other questions? <laughs> okay, may we have a motion to approve, please? So moved. Uh, we have a first and a second from Robert and Al. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Great, motion carries. We will move on to Charlie Williams and the Vice President's report. Thank you, Chair Gomez. Uh, let me start by welcoming Secretary Rodriguez as our next Executive Director. Great excitement and anticipation of your leadership and we really look forward to it. We're so happy about your appointment here at DASNY. Uh, I'll start with employee engagement on my last Vice President's report. I will know. <laughs> uh, Take notes. <laughs> You know, so much occurred with COVID and with remote work that this employee engagement is key to some of our employee satisfaction. We can't do this without tremendous support of the board. So we very much appreciate what the board's done for DASNY and, and this employee engagement effort. Tonight, we will have, we're here all visiting Janice in Buffalo. We'll have our yeah. all hands Buffalo meeting. Managing directors will all be here to present to the staff in Calgary. Uh, to the staff in, in Buffalo, take questions and you know spend some quality time together. So we're looking forward to that event tonight. Um, nice not to see Janice so lonely in Buffalo. Right, right, right. <laughs> I know, right? I'm really excited. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to be very quick. Uh, I'm very excited to be here with Janice. Uh, Janice is one of my favorite people. Uh, she's been a great friend to me for a number of years. She and I have been very close for a number of years. And she's one of my favorite people. And she's one of my favorite people. And she's one of my favorite we're doing women, and women's history. We had a, a great meeting of all the women leaders and staff at, at DASNY and in the Albany office. We had uh, some, some items made for our women leaders and a great exercise in, in sort of getting to know each other. I had, I had a lot of comments from people about this the first time I've met my wife. And I didn't know this about Albany. So it was, a, it was a great informal event that we had in the Albany board. Uh, April is celebrating Diversity Month. So we have uh, events scheduled for that as well. And moving past employee engagement, we did our scoping meeting for the $1.7 million uh, health sciences lab in Albany. That scoping meeting was March 26th. It was very, very positive, and we're waiting to get public comment back before we move, move to a full uh, environmental impact statement. That's a very large, very important project, so we're excited about the progress there. We will be refreshing our public facing and internal websites over, over the next few months. That effort's being led by Dan Brown and the communications group. We've got Fasser and Ricky Stinson, so they're doing a great job. It's all gonna be data-driven to really improve our customer and client and staff experience when they go to find things on our intranet and on the internet. So we'll go through all the web stats and, and try to make things more readily available for things that really not. So we're looking forward to that. It hasn't been refreshed in seven years, so it's time. Uh, there's a piece in there about remote work. You know, we allow remote up to two days a week. Some staff, uh, because they're required to be on site, aren't, aren't allowed to do much of that, but uh, we're running roughly 35% remote and 65% in-person work right now. We have a project labor agreement coming up. For the Capital District Site Center, they're building a new parking deck and garage, and Nadine will uh, walk through some of the elements there. We are requesting, thank you, Charlie. We are requesting the board adopt a resolution authorizing the execution of a new a memorandum of understanding between DASNY and the Greater Capital Region Building and Constructions Trade Council, which is a division of AFL CIO, and also including a PLA requirement in a project in project bidding documents for a project undertaken on behalf of the Office of Mental Health. Um, they have requested that we uh, include a PLA at, in the, with this project. So we are proceeding pursuant to their request and, and consent. The all made project will be a design build using design build project delivery method for the design and construction of a parking garage facility at the Capital District Psychiatric Center campus. Uh, we have complied with ASNI's policy regarding utilization and negotiation of project labor agreements, which was previously ab adopted by this board. And consistent with that policy, we have conducted a PLA impact analysis to confirm that the, the project, if conducted with the PLA, 
would result in the lowest reasonable cost based upon the size, complexity, and duration of the project. So based upon that, we therefore recommend that the board adopt the attached res resolution authorizing the use of the PLA um, in this pro project. Turn that back to you, Madam Chair. Questions for uh, Nadine or Charlie on, on their presentations? Where, where exactly is this parking garage being built? Here in, on New Scotland Ave, where the site center is. And I think it's in all of New York. But the Albany trades. Yep. Yes. The Greater Capital Region Building and Trade How Construction. How big is it? How many spots? 520 spots. 500 spots. All right, and, then, and Charlie, thank you for that that piece in the employee engagement. It's a really uh, important, it's an important component. It's often overlooked, and I think it will help keep DASNY strong. I mean, I don't mean overlooked here, I mean, Jen. Um, so thank you for the thoughtful attention to that and the rest of the team. I know, I know that's not a one-person job. Madam Chair, before you move on, may I make a couple of comments um, in support of... Charlie's efforts uh, to provide a venue in New York City uh, for the DASNY New York City staff to spend some time, get to know each other better. Um, I don't think we had done that before. And it was terrific. It was just terrific with the, the managing directors each uh, making brief presentations, um, followed by lots of food and, and, and other things. Um, it, it was, uh, it was a surprise. I was surprised, uh, Robert and I were fortunate enough to be able to attend that uh, together. He actually, I would never have found the place without Robert. Uh, <laughs> Adding value but, already. <laughs> he was kind enough to do that for me and without him, I would not have made it there. But let me say that, uh, two things. One, Sarah Richards and her uh, principal assistant um, were absolutely instrumental in pulling that thing off. Uh, you, you know, there, there was there's a little lot of strum and drang. It was what it was, um, but they handled it extremely well. I was very pleased uh, with the opportunity to be there. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, John, um, for what you did. And Robert, it was great to share the event, the event with you. I like that. Little did I know. <laughs> yeah. It was fantastic. The employee engagement is really going a long way towards building up morale and really helping people to know one another. So thank you, Al, for, for mentioning that. I think what was just to share a reflection, there are a significant number of new folks that have joined DASNY recently. And I think it was very important for them to uh, build some com camaraderie across some of the different um, uh, program program elements. So that's the kind of energy that I think is is important to making sure that we keep um, people in, uh, excited and engaged here at DASNY and uh, and to recruit the talent that we need to be successful. So thank you for that, Alan. Thank you to the team for moving that ahead and Sarah for guiding that through all of the different parts of the state. That is, Thank that you. Is, I really appreciate that. It, it was great to have you there. I think a great time was had by all, and the staff really did appreciate you know the board members you know showing up and having a chance to meet you. So thank you to, to you as well. Yeah, no, that's great, and it's su super important for the younger generations. Like mm -hmm. our ability to recruit talent is going to be dependent on how how well we engage employees. Okay, um, let's see. Um, I guess we need to vote the resolution on the PLA. On the PLA, yes, correct. Thank you. Um, I, move, I move approval. Okay, great. Thank you, Al and, and Jerry. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Um, Charlie, you have one more item, I believe. Well, we mentioned it early, earlier, Greg Meisenbacher is our new internal controls officer, and I turn to you, uh, Madam Chair, to uh, advance the resolution for him. Fantastic. I think that's that's great. Uh, is is um, Zach with us tonight? I'm sorry, Greg? 
Yes, I'm here. He is. Oh, there he is. Okay. All right. Uh, have you? Uh, does everybody? Does everybody know him? We met him in the audit committee yesterday, okay. but maybe the other board members Great. do not. Greg, you want to tell us a little bit about you? Uh, sure. I've uh, I've been at Dazzy now for about five and a half years. Um, I spent that entire time in our internal audit uh, department working with Jenna. Um, prior to that, I spent some time in internal audit, um, private finance, uh, my degrees in accounting. Um, I hold a few different certifications related to uh, to internal audit and uh, and risk management. Um, so yes, that's uh, that's the very quick. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I'm sure you will be a welcome addition to the, the team, and we're looking forward to some uh, robust internal controls. Uh, may we have a motion to approve the resolution? I make the motion. Thank you, Joan. Uh, a second? How about Janice, since we're giving some buffalo love today? Great. Thank you. <laughs> Look, you never know what they hear me, but <laughs> I know. I'm it's all about I'm fly up one time to meet the buffalo and appear up there. Okay. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Over to you, Portia, on the public finance report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a brief market update. Total new issue volume for 2024 is approximately $111 billion. That's up about 21% from last year's comparable volume. Our supply for this week is projected to total about 8.7 billion. That includes a deal for Cornell University, which we're in the market this morning. Uh, municipal bond funds saw inflows last week. That marks the sixth consecutive week of inflows. Tax exempt bond yields yesterday were stable with the 10 year AAA MMD uh, decreasing by one basis point to 2.65%, and the 30 year AAA MMD remained unchanged at 3.81%. US government bond yields yesterday were also lower with the 10 year Treasury yield decreasing by 10 basis points to 4.36% and the 30-year Treasury yield decreasing by five basis points to 4.5%. Uh, I would note, though, that the CPI number came in this morning at 8.30, came in hotter than expected, stronger than expected. The market is off today, and rates are up. Um, since the March 13th board meeting, the one-year MMD rate has increased by 35 basis points. The 10-year MMD has increased by 25 basis points, and the 30-year MMD has increased by 24 basis points. During that same time period, the 10-year Treasury yield has increased 20 basis points, and the 30-year 30 30-year 30 has increased 19 basis points. Now, overall, I'd say you know the market has been quite volatile, but at the same time, um, you know the deals are getting done, and um, you know things are progressing, um, progressing well as far as the deals in the market are concerned, notwithstanding the volatility. And that concludes my report, Madam Chair. Uh, I have a question. What does the supply pipeline look like for us? And I say that law in part because of the volatility that you mentioned um, and the fact that, I mean, uh, today the interest, the 10 year um, treasury like went up, spiked up just as the more, same time the market spiked down. I think they've both moderated a little bit over the past hour. But yeah, um, I think when CPI was announced, right, it spiked up to over 4.5%. Right, right, that's, yeah, that's what I saw as well. Do you, what's our supply pipeline look like? Are people rushing to them? Are they delaying because of, or are they rushing? Um, are people interested in buying at these levels? Which I would think so because the interest rates are so good. But on the other hand, people that if you want to finance a project, you don't want to pay out these interest rates. So what are you seeing That's out there uh, in the market the past week you or know, so? The, the market has been volatile, but the deals have been getting done. Um, you know, we did our big pit deal, we did the CUNY deal, we did New York Institute of Technology, you know, all, you know, through relative periods of volatility all went well. Um, the Cornell deal is in the market. That seems to be doing well. As you know, we have the big school district deal, which should enter the market in May. We did the, the small charter school deal at, um, at the end of March. That was well-received. 
Um, and then you've seen the deals that are in the pipeline um, today in terms of the meeting that we had today, both in finance committee and the board. Um, you know, we can, as far as the pipeline is concerned, and we've talked about this over the years, um, when the deals come in, they come in very quick. You know, gone are the days where, where clients came in, they said, hey, you know, we want to let you know that we're coming and, you know, we'll, we'll be in and want to get into the market sometime three, four, five months down the road. When clients come in now, they say that they want to get into the market immediately. You know, in general, I would say the, the pipeline has been more robust this year as compared Good. to last year. Um, you know, well, should we, talk, we talked about trying to, I think, try to do something with the guidelines to sort of maybe help assist that sort of speed process without in any way, you know, ignoring our our obligations to yep. review these deals. But I think we were sort of waiting on something to come, right? On the guidelines yeah. or yeah. adjustments? Yeah, I think, you know, um, we as staff need to get you more information. Certainly we look forward to working with Robert on that in terms of um, shaping that initiative. Um, you know, but again, the, the pipeline is, is up from last year. You know, part of that may be due to the fact that in general, I think the expectation is that rates would be coming down. Um, you know, prior to this most recent CPI release, you know, I think the market was expecting maybe three to four, um, you know, rate decreases um, through the end of the year. I think the expectation is now probably much less, maybe at, you know, two rate decreases, but obviously, you know, that depends. It's data driven. It depends on you know economic releases over time, um, but in general, I would say the pipeline is definitely um, it is more robust this year than it was last. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, then we will move to Kim and the finance report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Included in your materials is a standing monthly financial report, which details activity through February. Um, we've closed on five private client and one public school district uh, debt issuance for the fiscal year through February, generating total fees of $1 million. Total operating expenses through February continue to be under projection by $2.4 million. And as previously reported, it's primarily due to personnel costs due to retirements and slower than anticipated recruitments. On the year in audit, we're, it's that time again. Um, we just concluded the fiscal year. Staff has begun preparing for our financial statement audit. Um, we don't have any new pronouncements that we're implementing this year. However, this will be the first audit led by our new assistant director of accounting. She and her staff are forging ahead in preparation for the audit, all while working on the new system implementation for the new accounting system. KPMG expects to be, begin their field work by late April. Staff are continuing to work to book entries and perform reconciliations related to the March activity. On the project side, just a brief update on our new system implementation. We recently completed what is called iteration zero of the project, which entails setting up a shell of the system with just basic functionality. Uh, staff performed a number of tests, um, such as setting up new vendors, loading chart of accounts, and we're waiting final sign off of the documentation in order to move into what's deemed iteration one. During that iteration, iteration we will begin data migration. Um, Chad Pirro, who is leading this project, he's done a lot of work to clean up a large amount of data so that we're migrating, we're not migrating unnecessary information, um, duplicate vendors, duplicate customers, and just trying to create a standard structure so that all of data goes in in a standard format. In parallel to that implementation, the IT team has been progressing on the data platform build, which will house the legacy data not being converted to the new system. We're still working through a few functional design documents intended to address a few of the open gaps that were identified during the information gathering process. A number of them were in the AP area, so it's taken some time to review the proposed solution to ensure that it meets the needs of the business. Once we have sign off on those, Pro Solutions, HSO, who is our implementation partner, will be able to review the timeline to assess whether we will remain on target for our 401 2025 anticipated goal ID. HSO is aware of our year in audit 
commitments and we'll make efforts to move along other items while certain staff are focused on year end responsibility. And unless there's any questions, that concludes my report. Any questions for Kim? Thanks, Kim. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, great. Then we will have uh, Steve in the construction report. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, behind the um, tab for construction are the standard construction division reports in the board book. A couple of highlights uh, for the group this morning. We added four new projects, totaling 40 million into the uh, portfolio during the past reporting period. There were two projects for CUNY and two projects for OMH. Uh, the team also completed two projects, one at uh, John Jay College for CUNY, a renovation project that was worth $7 million and a uh, building envelope upgrade project at Pilgrim Psych Center valued at 13 million. Expenditures for the period ending February 2022 were 563 million. And for February 2023 were 696 million for a net gain of 133 million year over year. Uh, on the cover of the report is the Mohawk Valley Psych Center project we uh, just completed. Uh, it's a new gymnasium and some additions to some uh, exterior space. Uh, the project uh, consisted of a 10,000 square foot new gym, uh, as well as an expansion of the uh, exterior recreation space. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge because we were working in an occupied facility, which can always be interesting at best. The project budget was uh, about 8 million. Envision Architects was the design consultant and uh, Bunkoff General Contractors was our construction contractor. Uh, just a couple updates on the programs. Um, the FIT project for SUNY uh, continues to um, advance. Uh, our general contractor is still forecasting a May 2024 completion date, um, which would allow for uh, fall occupancy. Uh, I last visit, visited the project on uh, Thursday, March 30th. Uh, we have uh, another project set of meetings uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, UAlbany's Colonial Quad, I was there yesterday. Uh, this project um, is the renovation of two low-rise residence halls and the addition of a fitness center um, scheduled to complete in June of this year uh, for occupancy for the fall semester. Uh, I was also at New Pulse yesterday. We started a $50 million gut renovation project for Mohonk uh, Hall. We're also adding a floor and a new roof system. Project is uh, off and running. It's built to complete in July of 2025. And it's never too early to talk about the summer projects. We have 25 this summer at campuses across New York State with a total value approaching 50 million. As far as CUNY goes, our next scheduled meeting with CUNY uh, is on April 25th. Uh, we also have a meeting this Friday to discuss construction expenditures and their desire to ramp uh, those expenditures up. Um, we had our second in-person CUNY coordination meeting in March, and we will meet at CUNY's offices in April. Uh, we continue with robust portfolios at Queens, Hunter, York, CSI, New York City Tech, and City College, amongst others. Um, Charlie mentioned the DOH, DOH Life Sciences Lab project. We are now uh, deep into design. Um, we received, uh, as you all heard at the last board meeting, approval from OSC to uh, begin the project. Uh, design is currently underway along with planning and programming activities. Uh, at OMH and OPW, um, continue with very robust portfolios of work across New York State. Um, I would just like to mention to the board that we bid a project at Central New York Psych Center. We um, a sign of the construction market, we got uh, zero uh, bids for the general construction package. This was the second time we bid the project, the first time we bid it under a PLA. The second time we broke the project apart into four different packages. We received no bids for the general construction package, one bid for plumbing, one bid for HVAC, and three bids for the electrical package. Of the bids received, uh, the total Price was about 26 million. 
and the estimate for those three packages was 14. So um, the market's uh, a bit upside down. Uh, just a couple of other administrative items. Uh, we are now up to 49 open positions in the construction division. We're also recruiting for 12 summer interns, so 61 open positions in the construction division. Um, we mentioned the PLA for the parking garage. We're meeting with the same group, the Capital District uh, BCTC, this Friday to begin discussions on the PLA for the public health lab. Uh, PM web implementation continues to chug along. IS is doing uh, a nice job with regard to migrating projects from our legacy system into PM web. As I reported, there's about 1,100 projects now in the new system. And as far as upcoming uh, presentations by DASNY, uh, I'll be speaking to the Construction Management Association of America in New York City on April 25th. Uh, Kara Mallard will be presenting uh, and is on a panel for the Society of Marketing Professionals on May 22nd. And I'll be delivering a presentation on July 16th to the SUNY uh, Physical Plant uh, Administrators Association. And that concludes my report. Madam Chair, I'd like to make note that Steve was uh, uh, voted the one of the 100 most important construction executives in New York State. Oh, very uh, nice accomplishment for that. Very Dad. nice. Very, very nice. Okay. That was Congratulations. My, city and state, I forget. Yes, one of, yes, you're right. I, I didn't see that particular. And I note also that Madam Chair talking. also was voted one of the most 100 developers in New York City, I believe. So congratulations <laughs> to Madam Chair. <laughs> I'm sure there's a list for all of us. Right. <laughs> Not to take anything away from Steve. Both, both, both very nice. Yes, I, that's, so a, that's a great accomplishment for Steve because, you know, agency folks are not often always right. thought of right. as, you know, in the, the sort of that piece of the industry. So I think, yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Jerry. That's that's great. And congratulations, Steve. Um, okay. Um, we are going to then uh, handle anything Nadine has to say in an executive session, which I will call for now. Um, we get a motion to go into executive session to discuss the financial and credit history of a particular corporation, matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation, and proposed or pending current or current legislation. May we have a motion to go into executive session? Oh, yeah. no, Thank second. you, Wellington and Beryl. Okay. Okay, Amanda, can you? Okay, we special part of the script. Okay, uh, we uh, just adjourned the executive session. We are back in the main session, in the public session, sorry. when. While we were in executive session, no decisions were made other than to return to the public session. As a reminder, the June meeting is going to be held on Tuesday, June 18th, as June 19th is the Juneteenth holiday. Mark your calendars. Um, may we have a motion to adjourn the DAS meeting? So Wellington and Jerry, Jerry somebody, <laughs> Beryl. Uh, okay, all in favor, <laughs> aye. Aye. Okay, any abstentions? We are adjourned and we will go. Do, do, do folks need a quick break to. Uh... I, I will. I can. Okay.